All right. Hi. This is Flare Nui Nui Quest. This is a little platforming game um, based off of the group Hollow Live, which is a virtual YouTuber agency. I think they've got about 90 or so members in it, but today we're focusing on Flare. Look at her slide and jump around. Wow, she's super cute. I love her long ponytail. Um, we're just going through at the start here. This game is super cool. It's kind of Mega Man-ish, but it's like linear stage-based stuff, but you get abilities of other characters. I don't know. We're gonna pick up these guns, because that's <laughs> what Flair does, I guess. I guess she shoots people. <laughs> you can shoot these platforms to toggle the way they go. Kind of neat little environmental. Not too puzzly, but we're gonna fight the first boss here. Look at that cute bunny. Goodbye, bunny. Find the Usa drill. Uh, this guy kind of stinks, kind of the tutorial boss, but likes to go off screen a little bit. We're gonna try to utilize some charge shots. Charge shots do three damage. You can shoot pretty rapidly for only one damage, but bosses typically get invincibility frames, so for this one, we just kind of want to keep it on the three damage as much as we can. And then the music starts, and then and then and then the adventure begins. We're gonna be sliding around everywhere. You actually are invincible while sliding, so hopefully if you aim it just right, you can slide just between some enemies and not take damage. Um, here's Watsume, hello. Although, you know, you typically you tr try to not get damage, but we actually do take a death warp in this stage, so it's actually not too bad to get damage as long as it's not all the way to zero. Last HP is the only one that matters. Pretty sure you can make this cycle, but I just didn't. Good job, Flare. No, that's fine. There's little checkpoints. Just enough checkpoints that the run isn't really in too much danger of like losing a whole bunch of time. Um, I do get knocked down to 1 HP here, so I kind of hesitate for a moment because this enemy is going to kick my butt. We're going to come over here to pick up a mysterious key and then immediately take a death warp from these little, these little smoke steam things. Bonk. See ya. But, um, yeah, related to the, the key, the category we're, I'm playing here is all bosses, which means we are going to fight all the bosses in the game. So it's very well named. Um, typically in any percent run, you'd skip, like, four of them, I think? Including the first boss we just fought, the, the Usa Drill. There's something, you can, like, immediately skip back to stage select after getting the guns, and you can skip the drill. But I don't do that, because we're, we're fighting all the bosses today. You can disable these little steam things with a with a shot, so you can have to time this just a little bit because these things will knock you off if you jump into them. Going into the first boss, here's Pekoda. She's a cute bunny. I like bunnies. There's one of them also on the left side of your screen. Um, there's a bit of a rhythm here with shooting that you can do to get a three damage hit and then a one damage hit. The the charge shot in this game actually charges super fast, but if you shoot too fast, the enemy is still in invincibility frames from your one damage shot, and then your three damage shot doesn't do any damage. So you gotta kind of balance it a little bit. And we'll be we'll be doing the single shot charge shot on a, a couple more bosses. But beating Pekka, we did get a carrot rocket launcher, which is kind of cool. A lot of the bosses in this game, you'll get a you'll get a different uh, weapon that you can swap to, which is pretty neat. They only affect your charge shot, though, not your base shot. So you always have your base shot that you can deal with. Um, this room's really weird to get through quickly because there's a lot of different places you can get hit and go faster or not in. The The knockback is a little strange in this game depending on, like, what state you're in. If you're jumping or not, sometimes you don't get knocked back at all. Or... Sometimes you'll just fall straight down. It's a little weird. But, uh, we picked up a little time stop item there that we can just slow down time. You're supposed to slide through that little tunnel there so those saws don't hit you, but I didn't time it very well. So here's a mysterious cloaked figure that's in our way. Oh no. This attack where she throws the scythe in front of her is actually what we want to see the most. But um, 
Otherwise, when the scythe is spinning, we actually cannot do damage, and that's the attack that leaves her the most vulnerable. The jumping one isn't too bad. And actually got pretty okay RNG for that one. Bum, 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 bum. Some weird little toggle blocks here. Pretty simple little thing to get through. Slide through that thing. The slide immunity is actually... It comes in pretty clutch a lot, actually. I'm gonna take a little detour over here. Go down this little hidden hole to grab the second key. What do the keys do? Maybe you'll find out. I promise it's important, though. Don't want to get hit too much here, because... Um, there is a boss fight immediately. This stage is almost over already. The first stage is actually, like, the longest, and it has some really tight platforming uh, compared to the other stages, so it's a little it's a little different in that regard. If you enter a boss fight with your charge shot out, you actually will hit the boss, which is kind of funny. It does do damage. So here we try again. Here's Miko. We try again to do the one damage, three damage, one damage, three damage, but she kind of moves up and down a lot with this jump kick, so it gets a little more difficult to do that. Um, we did pick up the, the Carrot Rocket, like I said, but it also only does 3 damage to this boss, so... And it shoots at a, a slightly different tempo, so it doesn't really work out with the the rhythm we're going for. Or else we would use it. That's Miko. Bye, Miko. We took her, her little pedal shot thing, which we'll use on one boss. Um, it's a little weird otherwise. Stage 3, the Pirate Harbor! Um, it has these fans that blow around. They're fun to mess with. You can get a weird boost right here to jump up here without going all the way around. There's actually a strange mechanic in this game that if you buffer a jump after jumping, um, your next jump is actually like a tile or so higher. It's really strange, but it's um, you can use it off that fan right there to get a little more, a little higher up there. We saw Aqua sleeping on the job. Take a little shortcut. That little unmarked shortcut behind the curtain. Um, this section of the stage right here is a weird little stealth section. It just kind of comes out of nowhere. We've got a screen screen transition over here, and then we can go back. Um, we're tasked to like light these fires with Flare's charged fire shot. And while Aqua is right here sneaking around, you don't want to disturb her. Oh god, but she's in the way! And then she slices you a lot. And then you just... Kind of run away. Okay, it's over. <laughs> it goes really quick when you're not scared of just going through Aqua. But she's she's funny. Chasing you around with her, her giant swords while you're just sneaking around. Alright, there's a little puzzle over here. Not really a puzzle. That we have to light these fires. Um, these fans do affect our fire shot. This Oh my gosh, this candle's really hard to hit. <laughs> These fires do affect our shot, but if we slow down time, our shots actually do not get affected as much, and that actually lines up pretty well to hit those candles there in those little tiny alcoves. And we pick up the third key. There's five of them, by the way. That's a spoiler. These guys stink. I have to use my time stop there because... It's a time slow. It's not really a time stop because... If that guy gets on the corner, you do not get a lot of invincibility frames in this game. If that upper guy sticks on the corner there, you are stuck for a while before you can really uh, make that jump because <laughs> the jumps are <laughs> the jumps are uncharacteristically tight I would think compared to some other platforms but it's okay the the penalty for failure is not very much unless you're trying to go fast then it's a pain in the butt Flair looks so cool on this little aqua bike thing this is an auto scroller section. It's actually kind of long. Um, because a boss is a part of it as well. And, and, you do what you can. Sometimes games just have auto scrollers and you gotta deal with it. The best part about this is that you're not really concerned about your health for the rest of the stage because these enemies very often drop health. And it's extremely likely you're going to top off on health before getting to the boss, so you don't really have to worry about your health too much in this stage. Like the previous two. Or I guess any of the other stages you're kind of worried about health. I love the music in this game, it's so good. 
So, the left and right side of the arenas here have these little fans on it. If you line up just right with the right side of this fan, you can actually jump and shoot her while... without, like, running into her to take damage here on the right side. Um, these rocks that come by complicate things a little bit. And if you do end up getting hit, you do get knocked around just a little bit, so you have to reposition yourself. This sword attack will also knock you around a little bit. So you just kind of have to hope she doesn't use the sword attack and you can keep getting hits in here. Um, pretty easy fight otherwise. It's also easy to be greedy and take damage really fast, but if you're utilizing this safe spot, it's really not that big deal at all. And then we get a cool sword. The sword's really neat. It lobs a sword. It doesn't shoot it straight. It, like, lobs it in an upward arc, and it falls down, and it's actually very useful. Player coming into Stage 4 in style, but we're actually only going to be here for a moment. We're going to pick up this little item here, and this actually gives us a double jump. And we're going to immediately go back to the previous stage. Um, this is... A part of the all bosses. I said it was just all bosses, but it's actually all bosses. And we're also getting the true ending. Whoa, this game has three endings. It's really neat. Um, there's bosses on the way to the true ending. So if we're getting the true ending, we gotta fight all the bosses. And we actually do need to come back here to grab something that we couldn't do the first time. But with the double jump, we can take a couple of shortcuts to make it faster. We're only going about this far in the stage here. So we were avoiding Aqua earlier because we couldn't actually... We couldn't defeat her, but... Getting Marion's weapon, the lobbing sword, we're gonna use it right here. <laughs> and pick up Aqua's swords, which are by far the most overpowered weapon in the game. <laughs> now we're coming straight back into stage four. That's them. That's what the charged swords do. They slice a lot in front of you. They have a very large area. Utilizing the jumps I talked about earlier to get an extra tile, you can barely get through this room before the snowstorm happens with it. But I didn't, because it's hard. You can also get on the left side of this guy if you aim a jump just right, but I also didn't. This is really just me talking about... Oh, don't shoot this guy while the sword's... No, no, no. <laughs> don't shoot Don't shoot this guy with the one damage attacks, because you need to do the big hit with the, with the swords. Ah, close enough, whatever. Anyway, you can get on the left side of this boss at the start, and then you don't have to, like, wait for him to explode. You can just kind of sneak on through. Here's where I mess up my jump a lot. I remember this. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> the buffer jumps are really strong. Oh, the swords also hit really rapidly, so they make funny sound effects like that. Alright, here's Ayame. We're gonna try to use the pedal attack on her. She is very squirrely, and she also puts up this shield that you can't hit through. I'm pretty sure there's a way you can, like, lob the Marine swords over it to hit her while she has the shield up. That's something to practice. That's something I should practice. But um, she does have a weakness to these pedals, so they do four damage, so... Fight doesn't actually take too long otherwise. Almost to the boss of this zone. There's one more section, and we're gonna we gotta go down a secret cave. It's really secret, okay? But you'll never see it. There. The platforming detection in this game is a little strange. There's like no corner correction. Like if you jump upward and there's a corner above you, unless you are 100% clear of that corner, you will not go up. So it makes that room a little weird getting through. And luckily we keep enough health here because we're going to go fight Fubuki, who isn't that dangerous, but there's also a fight right after her that we want to keep a lot of health for. She's not weak to the sword, but the swords do like really quick damage. And if Fubuki gets into a loop where she keeps using an attack that keeps her grounded, um, you can kind of just do this. This is really nice of her. This is like amazing RNG, actually. <laughs> she gives you a little frost shield. Um, I don't take it though. Hi, Mio. 
I don't take the frost shield because I don't use it at all. So we just don't pick it up. Here's Noelle. Here's our friend Noelle. She's got kind of evil stuff around her. Oh no, we have to use the swords though to knock the evil out of her. We saved you. Oh no. Flare, what happened? Dun dun dun. So we beat up Noelle with the swords and Flare gets taken away. So actually now we're playing the next stage as Noelle. Who has a couple different properties that are pretty interesting. She has this rock and slide jump, which is super fast. But she actually does not get any of Flare's items, so you actually do not get double jump anymore. Um, so you kind of have to go through this stage a little differently. You do not want to fall down that pit. <laughs> slide jumping into that saw is really, really rough. You gotta kind of time that one correctly. She doesn't have any ranged attacks either, only this mace swing. Which leads to some uh, little interesting boss fights here. Long bridge with the comets. These things stink. So when you're sliding, you're invincible to damage there, and Noelle's the same way. Uh, and her slide's like twice as long, and you cannot stop the slide once you start sliding. So she just goes. Um, slide jumps are fast, but slides, just, just slides are, you know, safe and fast enough that you can get through that room not too bad. That was Suisei. We beat her up. Sorry. If you make that long slide jump, you get some health, and then you can go into the little castle area. And try not to get knocked around by these little blue shots and the big saws. The saws hurt. Normally, damage in this game is only one. Like, you only take one damage from a lot of stuff. Um, these saws do three, and that adds up pretty quickly, considering the iframes you get in this game are very, very low. So you can actually take damage pretty rapidly. All right, one last little detour here to pick up the last key. Key five. All right. So we got all the keys. We can go fight the final boss and show you some cool stuff. This is, <laughs> look at this corner correction. There's like none of it. It's really hard to get up there, I promise. I dare you to try to do this quickly. <laughs> Here's Polka. Um, she's... This fight's a little strange. She splits into these cards, and if you hit the card that she's, like, going into, you get free damage in. Otherwise, it's just kind of trying to dodge her attacks while jumping over her. Noelle's charge attack does do five damage, which is pretty good. You can also kind of get a rhythm with just two damage, two damage, two damage. I'm not actually sure which is faster. But, um, they're both pretty pretty equal. And after Polka, we have this auto-scroller section number two. This one's definitely not as fast, or as, not as fast, no, it's not as slow as the one in the harbor stage, but you do have a death pit below you, so you actually do need to pay a little bit of attention. <laughs> if I'm at low health after the Polka fight, I will absolutely jump off and um, take a health refill. These... This la these last couple sections of this stage are like, there's a lot of damage you can take, so it's it's pretty inevitable to have to take a refill somewhere. Unless you get pretty lucky with some health drops. You actually can do this whole section blind. Like, there's nothing stopping you from just coming all the way up here to the exit, but it's it's tough. Alright, now we have a little wave fight on this bridge. Um, you're supposed to go in the direction that the wind is blowing to get to the next set of enemies. And hopefully you get a lot of health drops from all the enemies here. Doesn't always happen, but, you know, hopefully. Thankfully, in this run, I do quite a few to kind of top me off before definitely not the final boss. This song's really good, too. Alright, once the wind stops, you know that that was the last wave. You can just go. Here's definitely not the final boss. It's Miko again, except she's the demon lord this time, I guess? I don't know. She's got the purpley stuff around her this time. That means she's evil. Um, there's also a big old dragon up above her head, which sometimes when you hit her, the dragon will start, like, blowing smoke and, like this, will, like, knock you away for a little bit. But <laughs> Also, she dashes around, and you cannot... You cannot go right whenever the dragon's blowing smoke. It does not let you. 
the, the force he <laughs> just launches you. It's so wild. All right. So if you don't beat Noel in the previous stage, at the end of the previous stage, you have to beat up Noel with the swords. If you end up not doing that, like if you didn't go back and get the swords like I did, um, you play through this stage as Flare, and the game ends right there. But instead of you play as Noel, the game continues on, and you fight Flare right afterwards. Um, I tried to be brave here and beat Flare up and decided that's not going to happen. We're going to take the heal. <laughs> That was going to be faster than, like, actually trying to dodge your attacks to do damage. It's much it's much easier when you can just kind of stand in place and, and whack. Noelle's mace does destroy projectiles, so if you time it right, you could get some, like, really good hits in. If Flare uses the carrot shot, she might drop health too, which is, I guess that was probably what I was banking on. That maybe I'll get a super lucky health drop, but it didn't happen. All right, and now definitely not the final boss again. This big old dragon guy. Where is this? Oh my gosh. Um, only Flare's basic shots will do damage in Flare's arsenal. Noel has this little charge meter above her head, where once that gets to full, she will throw an eight damage mace up, which is really strong. So you kind of wanna. Drag the boss's head around into Noelle's shots. You want to make sure your one damage shots don't interrupt her her damage ticks. And you also want to use the swords on the hands whenever she's getting caught by them, or else it'll delay her charge time. It's it's different. You also don't want to get her shot by the beam because that I think that might actually reset her charge time completely. But whatever, boss is done. It's pretty short, but if you, like, if Noelle gets, like, caught in the hands for too long, it really messes up some things. Because the, the cycle gets all weird. What was that thing? That's the good end. You get the good end right there. Um, but it actually is not the end, because stage 6 opens up, which is the offices. Which is actually, this whole stage is just a boss rush. Um, the five keys you get, each one opens up a new boss in this little boss rush here. And you have to defeat all five of these bosses in one life. Um, they're randomly selected, so you don't know what order you're going to get. But you can kind of get a sneak peek by the, the color that's on the, the lock before each of them. Here's Ame. We beat her up with swords. She's weak to swords. I'm sorry, Ame. Your fight's a little easy. Sis, 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 sis. So we use Flare for four of these fights, and then we use Noel for one of them. So it's pretty varied. Here's Gura. We just kind of lob swords at her because it's actually not too difficult to hit her with that. Um, I think if you try to be fancy and like... I think she's weak to Flare's fire shot, but doing that and not getting owned is tough. And doing it fast is tough too, so I think lobbing the swords at her is probably just the best way to go about it. Oh yeah, I guess I kind of glossed over it, that we can swap freely between characters now. We get both Flare and Noel. There's a button on your controller you can set that just instantly swaps between them. So if you have a lot of horizontal distance to cover, swap to Noel, And then for the big jumps, swap to Flare. It's pretty neat. There's Ina. She's in a really unfortunate position. So lobbing swords is kind of the best way to go about it. She's weak to him too. Taking six damage is actually quite a lot. Um, but she alters her speed a lot. And then also you get these tentacles coming up from the bottom that destroy your platform. So it's actually really difficult for me to like get into a good spot to constantly hit her. Like this last hit alone, what's up? Now she stops completely and messes me up. One more for the road. Alright, here's Kali, the mysterious cloaked figure we fought earlier. Except this time we have Noelle. Whenever she's spinning her scythe, you can't, like, shoot projectiles into it, but Noelle's mace doesn't care about that, so we use Noelle for this fight. 
because she can't actually block our attacks. She gets two new things she can do compared to when we fought her in stage two, but it's not all that bad. Goodbye. And then, I guess you always know when you, who your last boss is going to be because you do all the other ones. This is Kiara. This is the one fight we actually use the carrot rockets on because she takes extra damage from them. And um, the her uptime, or I guess her like downtime on her her vulnerabilities really. Wait, I'm getting my positives and negatives mixed up. She's hard to hit consistently. You, when her shield is up, you can't damage her. So when her shield is down, you want to like hit with the biggest single hit you can, which is what the carrot rockets are for. It's a really weird fight. It's really tough to do that one fast because sometimes her attacks leave her more vulnerable than others. By the way, you can play this game as only Noel, and that fight's a nightmare. <laughs> when you don't have ranged attacks, that fight's a nightmare. All right, with the office is done, we're going to stage seven. This is the final stage. We're gonna cover this horizontal part with Noel before jumping at another bike and fighting Watsume. There she is. She throws melons at us. I really like the this boss of swapping between both characters. So Noel still only has her melee mace, but it is so much more damage that you want to swap to it whenever she's up close. One, two. Yeah, a quick seven damage hit whenever she's in melee range. You can't move left and right in this section. You are stuck in this specific spot. There we go. So this is the only other stage where there's a, like a big difference between any percent and all bosses. Any percent just goes left right here and uses some damage boost to like just fly up to the final boss. Uh, we're actually going to go right here instead. Because there's a boss this way. You can get to the boss the other way too, but the damage boosts take like time to do, and it's actually just about the same amount of time to go this way. The damage boosts are probably faster. Probably shouldn't have used the time stop there, because it makes this section a little weird. Nice dual character jump. Here's Kanada. She's... Is she weak to the swords? I don't know if she's actually weak to it, but we use the swords anyway, because... Um, you can really only get, like, one hit in whenever she's doing the swoops. And I don't think the swords... The swords probably still do, like, 2-2, two, two, so it's kind of the same thing. She's definitely not Storm Eagle, okay? Don't think that. You're lucky you can get an extra hit in here. Oh, I got another hit in? Dang, I'm so good at this game. For beating her up, we actually get the wall jump ability right here, which we're gonna not fall down there. The game wants you to fall down there. But instead, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna beat up this guy, and we're gonna lob a sword over here to hit a switch. Hi, Luna. We freed Luna, and we're gonna... Instead of... It doesn't only free Luna, it actually opens up this way down here, which has a hidden boss. <laughs> this is Coco. She's a really cute dragon, okay? I love her face. <laughs> no, this, this is a hidden boss. There's a hidden boss down here. And if we're doing all the bosses, that includes you too. So sorry, we're gonna come beat you up. And she's definitely not just a reskin final boss, okay? We're a reskin big dragon boss. But we're back down here, which is kind of at the start of the stage, but we have wall jump, so we can actually get back pretty quickly to where we were. Just going over here. Right. This is where we would have been. This is right below that switch from earlier. It's the last platforming section. This screen has a really cool jump you can do with Noelle because she's so fast horizontally. You can bounce off that, that little fan and just flings you right back up. And I actually have an incredibly large amount of health right here. I do not usually have this much health. Um, and there's three full healths in this- not full healths, there's three health pickups in this room. We don't need any of them, let's go! Here's Toa! But we're not fighting Toa first, we're fighting Bibi. Who is actually destroyed by these swords. 
And that was a pretty good pattern too. Maybe you can jump a, just a tiny bit instead of that good amount that she did and can like leave fire everywhere. Toa is also weak to the sword, so we're just gonna use the sword again while she dashes around and will hopefully stay still long enough for me to get enough hits in. <laughs> the range on the sword it looks really good. It actually only hits in front of you. It does not hit like above and behind you like it looks like it would. But with swords doing like up to eight damage per one attack, it's actually really quick to take her out. She has this weird flip mechanic too that you actually don't worry about too much. It doesn't mess with your controls or anything. Oh, the fight's over. The game's over, by the way. It's done. That's it. That's the game. It just ends right there. Toa snaps her fingers. The evil castle goes away, I guess. It's gone. The music actually glitched. You're not supposed to... I don't know if you can hear it. It's playing the music from the stage. It shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> this game's great. Let's flare Nui Nui quest. Um, this would be the credits. I mean, it is the credits, but it's mostly the music because this was only made by two people. So instead of like a bunch of names, they just kind of list the songs that they use for the game. Which is really neat. A lot of the songs in this game are like based off of actual songs that are done by Hollow Life Talents. So it's really neat the um, how they incorporated them into the game. The soundtrack for this game was done by Neon Cryptid, who has a lot of like really cool chip tunes and stuff. So go check them out if you like that. And the, the and the the everything else was done by Sulpix, or is it Sulp X? I don't know. There you go, there's the two people. Published under Hollow Indie. Wow, that's it. That's the whole game. Thank you for playing. This game also has like two other modes you can play. Like you can play as two other characters in like their own campaigns. It's pretty fun. Um, but this one's just Flares and, and Noelle's quest, I suppose. That's it. Cool game. Bye bye.